The first thing I want to say while we are recording is I want to thank Tim for once again agreeing, uh, in fact, offering uh, to take minutes in Etherpad. And um, if anybody wants to help Tim, uh, he's uh, already placed the Etherpad into the WebEx chat. And for blue sheet purposes, we should use the Etherpad for that. I see a few people already have. Um, I believe it is now customary to ask people not to send video, um, lest there be a bandwidth problem. Though, personally, I enjoy the video, um, at least under the current circumstances, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a concern. Um, and yes, there is a chatter room, just a moment. Uh, let me get that for you, Mark. Sec. It is R. Hang on a second. It is RFC. I'm sorry. RFC E F D P is the name of it. I'll put it in the chat here. Just a second. As such, I have some slides to show. Okay, question, are you seeing the presenter view or the, the nice big full presenter? Swap that. How's that? Better? Yes. Okay. All right, let's see here. I'll give it four minutes. Now, uh, as I am sort of running the meeting, I'm not actually following uh, uh, the Jabber conversation at the moment. Uh, so people should uh, bear with me. If, they, if somebody needs to say something, they just put it in the WebEx thing or, or otherwise uh, speak up. Let me see here next. All right. Um, I'll give another just in a couple of minutes. Okay. All right, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, get started with the preliminaries and people can catch up. If uh, first of all, uh, welcome to the RFC Editor Futures Program second virtual meeting. Um, this program operates under charter by the IAB, but based on that charter, we've agreed to note well rules. Um, looking at the attendee list, I see that Everybody here should be familiar with these rules. Um, so uh, I'm not going to go through any detail here unless anybody, unless anybody has any questions, in which case I'm going to refer you actually to somebody else because I'm not going to answer questions about this. Um, all right, today, um, again, as is typical, we, we, when we run uh, when working group style, which is how this program runs, um, 
Uh, we, we bash the agenda. Um, I'll do a very brief uh, program introduction review because I think nearly everybody was on the, uh, the last call. Um, and I think most people. Uh, we have really two discussion points uh, for today, um, but I'll, I'll step through um, uh, the. Uh, um, some of the, some of what I've seen on the mailing list and then. Um, what I'd like to do is um, at least get through the first bullet point a little bit. Um, it's a very high level discussion. Uh, one of the concerns that people have raised with me is that we tend to jump right into the weeds. And um, so at the high level, I, I wonder if we could at least try to have the high level discussion. This is something where we ended things the last time uh, in, in, in the last virtual. Um, I posted something to the mailing list about uh, trying to do a poll on this and I got absolutely no feedback. So um, this is sort of a, a bit of a prod. Um, the organizational discussion, the topic is really about um, how we want is capturing problems beyond just the GitHub. You know, is it time to start mapping out a draft um, for, for at least the problem side of it? Um, Notice that a number of people on the mailing list overnight said that we really aren't agreed on the problem space yet. Um, I, I have to agree with that, though I think we're getting there. Um, and so, uh, the, as, as we get as we go forward, I'd like to I'd like to take ideas from the room as to how best to proceed as an organization. Um, I don't know how many more polls we'll do, uh, but I think that I want to I want to at least stake out the next future meeting. But I'm not sure I'm going to have it in two weeks. We, we haven't we haven't agreed to that. We have an IETF that where meetings are being scheduled, and I want to I want to talk about that. Um, let's see here, uh, John, go ahead. Uh, you you have a question. We are in the agenda matching part. Good good yeah, morning. To I you. I just want to comment on something you said before about the putting the agenda together. You're getting no comments, which is that the no, it was on the poll on the poll, John. I understand, but uh, but I uh, uh, I suggest that at least for some of us, the amount of traffic on the list, especially as you mentioned earlier, out of the weeds, is just overwhelming, and not getting response to uh, any given poll or posting or comment may indicate overwhelm rather than anything else. Yeah, um, it could be the, uh, uh, it, it could, it could be that, uh, that we're also quite bursty. <laughs> I, I'll admit to it being a little bit surprised at, 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 uh, at just how burst. Does anybody want to bash the agenda here though? Okay. Um, hearing nobody, we'll move on. So uh, here is uh, the various bits of program information. Um, these slides, by the way, have already been uploaded onto the data tracker site that you see there. Um, I want to uh, thank the um, the tooling team and Cindy uh, for having uh, made the effort to make sure that the programs can can use the the data tracker. Um, the minutes from the last virtual meeting are uploaded, um, and from uh, uh, from what I said at the very beginning, these particular virtual meetings are non-decisional. You know, we will decide things on the list. Um, the intent was to roundtable a little bit initially. I'm gonna. I think that 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 aspect will probably come to an end here. Um, there's a GitHub. It needs a little bit of updating based on the last week um, in terms of the conversation that's been, been going on, and and I'll that over the next day or two. Um, there are a couple of extra drafts as well. Neville put out a draft um, uh, earlier this week. Well, it was one extra draft, I should say. Um, the Etherpad is already in the WebEx. It was was put into into the WebEx. You can see that from Tim, and Tim, I'll ask you at some point maybe to to repeat that just in case people can't see the can't scroll up for some reason. Um, and there is a jabber. Okay. 
Um, so here's the purpose of the program. Um, unless anybody feels like they, they need to be reminded of this, I'm just going to move on because you guys have seen much of this. Here's the charter. This is basically the same slide. Um, right? We don't have a lot of constraints on us, but we need to impose some on ourselves uh, in terms of being able to get work done, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so uh, the arrow here is sort of in between these two dots here, right? Seek agreement on what problems to solve and go solve them. And the reason it's between the two dots is we are beginning to see some solutions crop up while there's still a little bit of a lack of agreement as to what problems we're trying to solve. Um, and I think some uh, uh, freewheeling ideas along these lines is really good at the beginning of a process. And I'd like to say that we're still really at the beginning of this process. Um, you all saw the, um, you know, the various calls for participate the calls for chairs and then input on chairs. And I'm, I'm, I imagine the IAB will be making a decision soon about adding a second chair. Um, so, you know, let, let's say that we're still early in this program. There's been a lot of good discussion. I've tried to capture a lot of the ideas. I may not have um, captured all of them. Um, and so uh, that we're going to need to formalize that a bit as we go further. Um, and uh, I'll be looking for help uh, in terms of uh, how, and, and suggestions uh, from from everybody here uh, in terms of how best to do that. Um, on the problem space, from the chair perspective, I do see a certain diversity in terms of opinion, um, which uh, is, I think, to be expected. People are pretty passionate about uh, uh, about all of this, uh, some, uh, you know, some people believe that, you know, things, things were generally working quite fine up to a point. Other people believe that we need radical change um, in terms of, of what the series looks like or what the process is. Um, so there's a, a, a quite a diversity of opinion. And what we need to be able to do, I think, at least is decide on um, an approach in terms of resolving some of that, you know, diversity, if you will, um, in terms of how the series can evolve um, and allowing for uh, some change while perhaps um, there's some change that won't occur over time. So finding, finding a, the consensus uh, for this program was always going to be the challenge. Um, I think we're up to it. I think each of the people on this call and everybody who's participating in the group as a person of very good character and understands that consensus is something that will be difficult to find here, but we'll work to find it. From the last time, uh, we covered, we, we sort of began at this point in terms of looking at these questions and quickly it became clear that, uh, and particularly thanks to Colin Perkins, who really said, well, you know, he didn't say it in these words, but I think he is his implication was that we may be working at the wrong level in terms of even going into uh, in, in, in each of these questions. Rather, I think the way that um, it was looked at is, should we instead um, ask whether the RFC should be able to lead discussion about some of these things? And should we, should we appoint someone who is able to evolve not only the series, but how we view the management of the series? So, uh, this gets us to really the, the sort of strategic conversation, and I really hope it will be a conversation as to how we tackle the leveling uh, that we solve the problem. Um, this does lead into uh, uh, some discussion about uh, RFC editor qualities, right? If we're having a leader who's bringing this, this conversation in and, and bringing us forward in terms of our own thinking, that's uh, somebody who's going to, for instance, have some understanding of our community, probably very good skills in terms of driving consensus. And of course, you know, the, the, you know it's a little different from, say, just a project manager, perhaps. Um, so uh, one of the outputs of our group, of course, is, is having some understanding of the quality of the RFC editor that we're going to have. So um, some of the discussion points that um, the uh that that i think i heard and this was up to date until last night and i'll comment a little further um about that in a moment 
I believe there is broad consensus that the RFC editor does not have a technical veto. Um, the, that is the perhaps only point that, uh, that we have broad consensus on um, because uh, overnight, I'm not so sure that we have the same broad consensus that I thought we had on whether the RFC editor has an editorial veto. However, um, probably this is a, a question that uh, we, we can explore further. That is to say, I think people would agree uh, that um, uh, that if a document is so unreadable that that the RFC editors can't handle it, it, it probably shouldn't. That the that the RPC shouldn't handle it, probably shouldn't receive it. Uh, Braun, you have a question. Yeah, I was going to raise that the boundary between technical and editorial is very poorly defined, and I don't think you can answer those two questions differently. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, and, and I think, by the way, that even though that we should have that conversation. So, um, uh, I think that uh, there has been a, a, a at least some conversation as to uh, uh, can the series evolve with with, with amendments. Um, this was raised early, I think, uh, in our conversation. Um, you know, maybe over a month ago, even um, that it, that it that it's too hard to uh, to make changes. Um, John uh, Levine reiterated that point uh, in the last few days, uh, and we, we we had a, a pretty uh, Interesting conversation about that. Um, I don't think that there's any consensus there at all. It's you know relatively we, we haven't really explored it very very much. Um, can people not okay. So Martin can't hear me. Uh, uh, all right, don't know what to do about that. Um, the um, you know the the what what we said was okay. Who would have the authority and what 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 would you know, what would that authority look like and what skills would the RC editor require? I think these are questions that also need to be explored, but it occurs to me that perhaps the, even that question may be a little too low level. And uh, so uh, this is a discussion point. Um, we had, I, I think, at least some question about whether appointment of the ISC uh, is in scope. Um, in my view, in Michael, Mike St. John's view, it is, and in Tim's view, it is. But we can, uh, if, if other people have opinions, they're, they're uh, more than welcome to, to provide them. Um, Neville put out a document, and I just captured two points from that document, and I'll mention a third. Uh, one of those is should, should the RSC serve? Um, and this goes to the, the, the independence of the RSC. Um, and uh, not only Neville, but um, uh, but uh, other people uh, have asked the question of, of who should have oversight of the RSC. Um, people saw Mike's um, proposal and email, um, which he specified a structure. Um, I want to reiterate my thanks to you, Mike, for for putting that out, um, and also to John for for sharing opinions and for following through based on uh, our previous meeting. So. Um, those are the discussion points um, that I that I've heard um, to date. Um, does anybody have uh, any questions or comments on sort of my observations as to what I'm seeing on the list, and, or or additions that they want to add as, as important points that that need to, that they they'd like to cover today? This is more agenda bashing, but I'll, uh, I would entertain it if people have to, if they think it important. Okay. Um, given that, then what I would like to back up to is this point here. What issues, what level uh, should we be solving the, the, the RSC? Um, uh, should, we, should we be discussing the RSC problem? Um, if, uh, and before we do that, I'll just mention there should be phone dial in information available in the, in the invitation. Um, if, if if I understand, if, I can't look at it right now with all the with my screen being taken up, but I think that information should be there. 
Um, but I, I can't I can't promise it. I, I think it's there, and you can check the the message from the administrative uh, from 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 Cindy. So um, back to uh, this question here, um, which is: At what level do we want to tackle? Uh, how, how much power do we want to vest uh, the RSC with? Um, what power needs to be reserved to the community um, uh, through the RFC update process, for instance, using using rough consensus? Um, and um, so I, I would uh, I would ask people have comments that they'd like to make on, on this point. Um, would like to share their opinions. Um, uh, please uh, please speak up. I realize it's a little bit hard to get started, um, in, in, you know, especially maybe early in the morning for some or late at night for others. Um, if I ask the question, please feel free to restate it. Well, never here. Looking at that, that list, at least one of them, the question of who owns the series, I don't would see that, that this group could possibly uh, answer that question. Although Brian's draft um, had some suggestions uh, on that, or at least had a lot of discussion about it. So I think actually, Neville, if if if, if people haven't read your draft, they should. Um, Neville, you raised sort of a. Uh, an interesting point, which I, I said I was going to mention, and, and I didn't at the time, but I will now. You said that this pro this, this program should separate from the IAB to, to further independence of of the series. I presume. Do you want to speak to that point? Uh, well, <clears throat> this is the how did how did we get to, to this particular point question, and it, it seemed to me that. Well, as I set it out in that draft, the idea is that there are different streams who create documents and are responsible for them up to the point where they toss them over the fence and into the RFC editor system. Um, so there's a pretty reasonably firm boundary there as to, to who can do what. And um, the, the question of um, the independence question is that um, basically the, the RFC editor uh, is the person who has to implement any any uh, changes, and, and I think one of their responsibilities really does need to be to support changes which the, the, the various streams are, are asking for um, within reason. But the pushback is, well, if um, their publications experience, the publishing experience doesn't support that. And what says that this is some, not something that can be done. And, and you know, arguments about the borderline between should the stream be doing it, or is this something that the RF, uh, the series editor should be taking, uh, be settling. It's all very fuzzy. That that that's the problem. That is the problem. So, let me ask this question. Who has responsibility for the editorial structure of an RFC? That is to say, the how it how it how it appears is that the community is that the RFC editor is it the streams by by consensus? Who should have it? Well, that was my point about uh, seeing the uh, RFC as running something like a working group. <clears throat> to um, agree on potential changes that they are, um, so then that's how the RFC would would uh, influence such such changes. Uh, and once once we can see that there is agreement on on changes, then the RFC um, gets to help make it happen. Anybody else want to comment on this topic? Um, yes, Mark. Can you hear me? Good evening, Mark. Uh, no, it's not. <clears throat> um, I I think I agree that, that that's an interesting uh, potential model. 
um, in that you know it, it might address some of the concerns that I have. Um, but when you when you talk about independence, um, I I hear a lot of people talking about independence as a goal in and to itself, and and I'd much rather we consider independence as a mechanism that might get us some desired result. And and if we can think about what the results we want are, then we can figure out what mechanisms mechanisms we want to use. Um, I think you know if you run, for example, this function like an IETF working group, that that's a really interesting uh, idea, and I think we've talked about it a, a few times in different ways, but. Inevitably, if you talk about uh, it, running it as a working group, you need to talk about how you handle conflicts, and that usually involves different mechanisms like appeal chains or whatever. And and I think there are some really interesting discussions we could have around that. In that, you know, what is the appropriate appeal chain for this potential body? Uh, is the IAB going to be on that appeal chain? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it sounds like a lot of people are, are not so sure about that. So if we don't have the IAB, what would the appropriate appeal chain be? That, that's the discussion, one of the discussions I think we should be having. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, sorry. Um, is Eric Pascuala. Um, hey, Eric. Yeah, um, it is evening for me, at least for the next 34 minutes. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, um, I, I guess I, I, I think I'd also like to understand what the boundaries of or, or perhaps that the thing people are trying to accomplish with independence is, um, you know, uh, I think I think by um, uh, my opinion, but I think also by like measurement, the vast majority of these documents are ITF technical specifications. And so um, like the, the RC series really does have to serve the purposes that are that are required to have those technical specifications be effective. And so, um, to the extent to which um, uh, uh, what one thinks that, that, that the RC series should be independent of serving those purposes, then that seems like quite problematic to me. So um, uh, I, I guess I'd be interested in hearing what people are trying to achieve in that respect. Uh, for those who are arguing for a bit more independence, do you guys want to comment a little bit about uh, what what it means what accountability means in that context yeah eric uh this is tim it's not so much about um the processing of the documents but if you when i was reading 87 whatever in 28 and 29 and they talk about it sort of extending or sort of growing the the series or growing the pro you know um going out into the community you know getting you know sort of in engaging i was thinking that's where i was thinking they wanted a little more independence to sort of have that ability to sort of um make decisions in certain areas like that, right? Not so much the processing of the documents, but the other things where, you know, they're expected to sort of grow what's there, if that makes sense. Mike St. I would hope you could elaborate a little bit. I have to go dig, dig the documents up and go refresh my memory again. Um, but I think one of the things that are in there is um, wanting, I guess, I'd, I have to go back and read, and I'm, I was taking notes, so I can't, I'm kind of like, I've lost my track of mind, so I, was, I apologize for that. Okay, you know, if, if it comes back to you, Tim, you know, just ask for the floor again. Mike? Yeah, um, I, I think we, we probably all have different ideas about what we mean by independence. And my particular thing is the IETF and its whole structure is so consensus-driven that sometimes we paralyze ourselves. Um, with respect to the evolution of the look and feel, the input and the output of the RFC series, um, I'd rather hire an expert, um, you know, somebody with some skills in that space, give them the broad, the broad brush of that and, and leave them to go do it. Um, we got into this model, the, I, I, to this day got kind of frustrated with the management of, of the IETF when one of the folks, when we were talking about the RFC series and this RFC series editor input on things said, oh, she's just a contractor. And I don't ever want to have that. I don't ever want to have a conversation like that again. Um. Yeah, I, I, just 
my reading of history is is indeed that uh, it was it was quite a difficult struggle for the, for Heather uh, to um, to gain consensus on to the series. Um, it was really a, 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 a what change she got. I think is a testimony to to her abilities, but. Um, I think that the history, there is some history there that, that backs you up, Mike. Um, any other comments, uh, Colin? Okay. Uh, there seem to be very strong views about particular terms, such as contractor, which are possibly being colored by different um, backgrounds and different experiences. Um, certainly where I come from, just a contractor seems like a good thing. But perhaps that's that term has a different uh, connotation for different parts of the world. So I think we need to be careful, um, perhaps over interpreting certain statements. Uh, yeah, bef before I get to John, um, I, I think if I read my if, if I read the list correctly, perhaps there is another consensus point hiding here, right, which is that whoever this person is, they should be uh, treated as a respected member of the community. Does anybody disagree with that statement? I think that you have to be careful when you phrase that. I think they should be treated as someone from our community. Um, we frankly treat a lot of people in our community with disrespect. I'd rather we treat everyone with respect. But I don't think that this, I, I continue to be confused as to why this position is so different. I understand in some aspects why it is different, but why it gets so many exemptions, I don't understand yet. Okay, uh, I'll go back to the queue here. Um, John? Clinton, sorry. And I think you're on mute still, John. I wanted to partially respond to Colin, Colin and then go back and then go backwards from there. Um, we we have a phrase in some contractual situations here uh, called close technical supervision, and uh, where just a contractor intersects with that, it, it intersect, does intersect with that, and intersects in two ways. Uh, one of which is how much second guessing is going to occur of relevant that person's decisions. And how much they they need to feel like there's somebody looking over their shoulders all the time. Uh, the the other just a contractor thing is closely related to that, but different, and and comes back to some discussions at um, at IETF last uh, last summer, last July, uh, uh, which is that. Um, uh, we have a tendency to say contractor and talk about somebody as if they're in interchangeable and one can go swap them out like uh, like some other um, person with a short list of identical and easily obtained characteristics. Um, part of the problem I think we're having here and what makes this so different, Mark and others, is that there are a number of areas with the IETF needs to or ought to be doing things, whatever those things are, in which the level of expertise in the IETF community is extremely low. And the level of understanding that the IETF community, that most people in the IETF community don't have that expertise is even lower. So coming back to an earlier comment, it's not only independence with regard to strategy, <clears throat> it's independence with regard to uh, never wanting to see an appeal or an IAB or ISG group coming in and saying, well, we disagree with how you handled that English language construction, and we want to get community consensus on that, uh, both because it's a considerable waste of time and because the community's level of expertise in that area as a community as a whole in terms of expertise in that area, with notable exceptions, uh, is uh, is a whole lot better at network engineering than they are than they or we are at straightening out those kinds of problems, and that makes this role and parenthetically a number of other activities some very technical and some not 
but uh, but requiring a great deal of expertise, which is not widely shared in the community and not widely understood that many people in the community don't have, uh, turn into problems for the ITF globally. And in that sense, this is not that much different from any of those other uh, high importance, everybody has an opinion, very few people are experts area than, uh, than some of the others, but, uh, but also different in the, uh, in the sense that we're going out and hiring, which is to say recruiting and putting on salary professionals do those kinds of things. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, because you mentioned Mark, uh, Mark, if you want to jump the queue, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I I can't square your assertion that you know this expertise is so special with the fact that so many other communities like ours have done this without somebody in a role like this. Um, I you know yes, it does require some skills which aren't prevalent in the community, but they're still apparent. Um, I, I still don't know why that that necessitates an exception. We don't have an exception for, you know, I, th there's a lot of knowledge, for example, in, in HTTP that, that isn't present in routing, yet we still have routing area directors reviewing HTTP documents when they go to last call. I don't understand why this is so different. Um, and, and, and we have other roles like the LLC, which are not, uh, the, 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 you know, LLC director, which are not uh, exempt from criticism or from review or oversight. So I'm, I'm not sure why this is different. Okay, um, we'll go back to the queue now. Uh, Martin, please, and uh, how are you doing, Martin? Um, I'm really tired, um, and it is only four o'clock in the afternoon, so there you go. Um, I wanted to get back to some of the things that John said, and I think it, the, the root of the problem with this treating it as a fungible code monkey unit um, is derived largely from the fact that we build up this um, one individual who has a great deal of responsibility and scope and um, demands a, a, a quite an extraordinary set of skills, really, when you get right down to it. And we insist that that be one person. And the presumption that th this is one person is sort of persistent through this conversation. And I find that deeply disturbing because one of the things that I've been taught when it comes to building long-lasting uh, organizations is that you try to remove those points where the bus number is one and you try to find ways in which you can devolve responsibilities and uh, specialize people in, in various ways so that it's it is much easier to find someone who has uh, for instance the the grammar skills that you might need in, in a in an editor a functional editor role as opposed to someone who says strategy and whatnot and project management was one of the other skills that was it's highlighted as well, and there's a bunch here. So I want to put that thought in people's heads because I'm a little uncomfortable with going on with the assumption that there's one person involved. So Martin, um, that's a it, that's a great area to explore. I'm not going to put you on the spot now to answer this unless you really want to, but it might be sort of interesting for you to, to put out uh, an approach in which you, you see the division of how you see the division of labor. Would you be up for that? I have been noodling on this problem for a long time. I realize it's very difficult, but um, I, I will have to talk to a few people because my skills in this area are not strong. But um, I'm willing to, to collaborate with people on this if others have ideas. All right, good to know. Eric. Um, so, uh, I, I sort of wanted to follow up a thing that Mark was saying, um, uh, you know, it's certainly true that there are, um, uh, 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 you know, skills that, that we might wish to have, um, wh whoever entity or person who's in the function, um, uh, um, you know, that, that we, they're not necessarily that common in the ITF community. Um, you know, I have that function in my other, uh, other parts of my life. You know, I, I, I have a lawyer who I hire to like, you know, advise me on legal things. Um, um, so, um, certainly, um, I, I, I take his advice very seriously. Um, but I think, you know, um, I think we, it's important to conflate two questions. One question is, 
um, the question of independence, the other is a question of expertise. So, you know, in that relationship, I'm the customer. And if I choose to disregard his advice, you know, that's my, my, my responsibility. Or if I choose to hire another lawyer, that's my responsibility. Um, and I certainly don't handcuff myself and make it impossible to hire a new lawyer um, or, or say I don't have to be independent of me. His, his responsibility, I'm the customer and, and, and et cetera. Um, and so um, as I sort of indicating earlier, um, in this situation, the ITF um, is one customer of the RFC series. And um, it, it's, it's, I, I guess I don't really understand the situation in which, you know, we should handcuff ourselves and say, well, we shouldn't be a lot of opinions um, because um, the RFC series should be independent in that respect. Um, that's expertise, but the, but that's a customer, it's a customer client relationship, um, not a customer, uh, customer vendor relationship. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Karsten, good morning. Good morning. So I would like to point out that there are two aspects to independence. One was already mentioned, which is the authority to act, possibly unilaterally. Let's uh, find out why we would want to do that. And the other one is checks and balances. So you, you cannot get by an individual um, or, or whoever holds this uh, position. Um, and, and why might that be important? And <clears throat> I think we, we all have experience with bodies that, that tend to talk them to themselves into some groupthink that makes a bad decision seem inevitable. Uh, think AB in 1992. So, so somebody had to step in and, and beat these people back to their senses. And um, what, what I value about checks and balances is not just the skills. Of course, you need the skills to even understand the the problem in the first place and, and the results of actions and so on. But it's also a matter of perspective. And I think that that's maybe even more important. Um, so I would expect the RFC editor to really uh, bring the perspective of the long-term health of the series in. So the RFC editor would not be mired into some ISG discussion that, that uh, may, may uh, seem something, some change as a good idea, uh, but would uh, keep that perspective open. And that's one point where I would value that independence. Okay. Thanks, Karsten. Ron? Hi, yeah, I was a while back when we were talking about would they be a respected member of the community? The question is, are they a member of the community, same as everybody else, or does this person have special authority and special powers in some way? And I think just saying should be a respected member of the community doesn't answer that question. In which situations are they the same as every other member of the community? And in which situations are they someone with special authority who must be listened to? So um, let, me, let me just go capture, I would say, the last at least the last three comments from um, Eric, Karsten, and Braun, right? What, if, if I try to reconcile them, what, what I'm hearing, right, is that we have a professional, and also from John, um, we have a professional who, is, who, who has uh, a very different skill set from the one that we have. And it's a matter of how we want to empower that professional. From, and let me see if I'm capturing this right. And so the, for the people who I'm, I'm speaking of, please, tell, it, please interrupt me if I got it wrong. Okay. From, from Eric's perspective, right, what you have here is a, you know, a person who's, whose advice is, um, is given, uh, like a lawyer. Right, and actually, not just advice in our case, right? That maybe it is just advice. I don't know. That's the question. Uh, who's Can you press mute all for a second? There is a steam engine in the background. People, please mute if you're not talking. Thank you. So you have, uh, you know, you have a person whose opinion is valued, but is doing who's providing that opinion um, as a service, as a paid service. I think from uh, Karsten's perspective and from John's perspective, maybe as well, um, given that this person has a different set of skills where we don't have the, um, the, the, uh, um, 
where, where we don't have the skills, that person needs a certain amount of, of freedom to make changes or to, to, to run the job, to do the job, assuming the job actually has an operational aspect to it. And so uh, the question then is, does the, does the RFC editor really have an operational aspect is one question I have. Um, and uh, okay, so John, you're in the queue. On to a, to an earlier comment, comparing the situation with the RFC editor to the situation of a uh, of a review of routing by somebody else by somebody who's not a routing expert. Uh, our expectation is that if someone who is not a routing expert reviews a routing document, that they will not make strong assertions about routing which are outside their knowledge range. And our experience has been that when such people do make strong assertions about routing, which is significantly outside their knowledge range. The community recognizes that and handles the situation, coming back to a different earlier comment, with far less respect than one would hope, but the message gets across very clearly. But that requires that the person who is doing those reviews accepts the fact that there's some things they don't know. And our difficulty in the community with things that are well outside the our IETF's, shall we say, normal mainline engineering scope is that people do not recognize those limitations. Uh, so we end up with very long threads about, uh, about details and publications management and publication strategy by people who have no experience whatsoever in that area. And nobody has the, in general, nobody has the authority or will to try to rein them in in the same sense that somebody who was criticizing a routing document but didn't know anything about routing would be promptly reined in because that's much more IETF mainstream. And I've gotten doubly sensitive to this over the last several months because we've got the same problem in internationalization. Uh, we have a problem in the IETF that everybody who speaks at least one language, speaks and writes at least one language, possibly two, uh, believes that they have the expertise to comment on things which are much broader. And that's not the only example. Uh, so it's a matter of looking at an IETF core expertise and scope in terms of people understanding what they don't know and other people understanding what individuals don't know, and pulling back on that versus the situation we've got with the RFC editor and one which incidentally we finally got under control, I think, uh, broad spectrum meeting planning and strategy. Uh, again, everybody has a, an, a, a, an opinion, but the number of people with significant expertise in the issues there is quite limited. The number of people who recognize they don't have that expertise is also quite limited. Thanks. Yeah. Good point. John, before I give the floor back to Mark, I wonder if you'd like to take a stab at answering the the, the point that Mark made earlier, which is how do you reconcile the level of expertise and, and, and deference that we that we apply to the RFC editor role in this organization versus how it's handled in other organizations? Um, we 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 don't have a. I, I don't think the comparison to quote other organizations is fair. Because we have a problem, and the problem is we can't figure out whether we're an engineering body or a standards body or an advanced development planning body or something else. And, and most organizations are a whole lot more clear on that, which makes the job easier and the, and the job description much narrower. Um, I posted a note a couple of hours ago uh, that many of you may not have seen yet. But one of the questions which goes back to the dawn of the IETFs deciding it wanted to be a standards body uh, is whether the RFC series and its traditional role is the appropriate place to publish standards documents at all. And the decision which was made 25 years ago, plus or minus, uh, was yes, but that may not have been the right decision. And it may not have been the right decision for exactly some of the reasons that we're struggling with now about 
getting closer to living documents and rapid revision and uh, and making trade-offs between um, technically correct and, uh, and and reasonable editorially from an understanding standpoint by a broader audience and a number of other things like that. And I'm not sure we got that right. And I don't, I hope we can move this effort forward without addressing that question, but maybe we can't. Okay. Uh, thanks, John. Before I, I, I go to Mark, um, the meeting invitation I sent was for an hour, but our meeting is actually slated for an hour and a half. So uh, people need to drop off at the top of the hour, I'll understand, but um, just a clarification there. Mark. Is that going to turn itself off or we're, we're good? Sorry? Is WebEx going to go for the full hour and a half? Oh, it'll go for the full hour and a half. Doesn't okay. kick us off. Okay. So, uh, I, I, John, I would encourage you to look more closely at, at the What Working Group and the W3C, for example. They have that tension in what they do just as much, and it doesn't prevent them from, from not having this role defined. They, they source this mostly from the community in both cases. Um, and, and so I, I don't see that as a differentiator. But, but what I queued up to talk about was, uh, you know, listening to John, I, I'm, I guess, if anything, more concerned now because, you know, the way that you described uh, the interaction with the community seemed to be that the, 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 what you have in mind is a role that is, is so aloof or, or insulated from the community that, that it's discouraging interaction or feedback with the community. And I, I really hope that's not the case. Um, but to, to me, we should, th this role should be deeply embedded with the community and should be interacting with it quite a bit and taking feedback and ideas. And that's one of the reasons why the, these discussions of having a, a working group like function where there's an interaction between the RC editor series editor and, and the rest of the community is really exciting to me. Um, and, and if you say, well, no, we don't want that input because it causes too many conversations and it's too distracting, I think that's a really bad outcome. And I really hope we're not going there. Why don't I give John the opportunity to, to respond uh, to that and then I'll go to Braun after that, okay? John, do you want to, do you want to take that opportunity? I, I, I was trying to make up my mind, which is why I started to take myself out of the queue and, and, and talk in jabber. Um, this, this, this is a longer discussion, and, and maybe this is not the right time, but, but Mark mentioned What WG, and What WG is exactly an example of, uh, of, of what I'm talking about is the distinction, because What WG is a, as far as I can tell from a number of interactions, an organization which consists exclusively of a small cluster of implementers uh, with little or no representation from the outside community uh, and, uh, and an attitude problem that what they're doing is, uh, is documenting existing practice rather than figuring out how to go forward. And, uh, and to a considerable extent, uh, if anybody who, uh, who wants to become an implementer in that area, um, who isn't part of that club, uh, wants to do that, they just have to adopt whatever it is the club has decided on uh, with, again, no representation of the user community. Aside from what I was told when I was sitting on ANSI boards by their lawyers, it's antitrust bait, but that's another problem entirely. Uh, but it's very, very different from the situation we find ourselves in. And what WG is not out there publishing documents about the uh, directions of the technology into the future and a variety of other things like that. They're in that regard very much more narrow than our RFC series community is. Uh, and, uh, and as I say, quite different. And uh, uh, the differences between there and W3C are uh, are more complicated and hard to dissect, but I still claim there are differences. Okay, let me go to Braun, and then I'll, then we'll get back to Mark. Braun? Following on from what Mark said, and possibly with a narrower point of view, I've only been in the ICF for five years or so, um, 
and my experience dealing with the editor function as a document author and as a shepherd has been reading through the results that come back uh, very, very closely and in 50% of the time saying, yes, that's that's better. And 50% of the time saying, no, that, I don't know if it's accurate or 50%, but saying, no, that actually changes the meaning and it's no longer correct. Um, and so the process where something gets thrown over the wall and then comes back later with a whole stack of, of changes to format up the English, but winds up being technically incorrect is quite frustrating. As a, as a user, I would be very keen to see the result of this have something where there's a lot closer involvement with the authors slash shepherds through the process uh, rather than having something come back at the end, having been rewritten to some extent. Okay, so uh, that's a, a very interesting tack, right? It, it, it would be a, a pretty fun and uh, in terms of uh, how, how things operate, right? Um, you know, that, that, that you'd have what we would call sort of an early review by somebody from the RPC is essentially what you're suggesting. Yeah, a, co a collaborative editing rather than, than a, a stage in which it gets convert, converted from technical language to human language. Um, but then the human language still needs to be checked over by an expert to make sure it's still correct because the, the humanizing doesn't necessarily leave the, the description of what the document's supposed to describe still describing the same thing. Right. So, so I guess if I'm trying to pop the stack a little bit there, because that's some, that's a very, very specific aspect of, of interaction. Who gets to authorize that sort of interaction? Is it the RSC? Is it the community? Is it the stream owner? Um, is it, you know, is it an agreement between the stream owner and the RSC? What I'm trying to get at here, right, is, uh, you know, we, we have every opportunity in this group to boil an ocean or maybe two, right? And so, uh, it, 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 and thus not get anything accomplished. And, and I think it's going to take time to get anything accomplished in this group, just to be clear, right? We're, we're not, we're not coming to a halt. We're just, you know, there's a lot, of, we're still gathering our, our try, trying to organize our thinking in terms of this, this effort. Um, what is the, what level should that, how, how should we state agreements or, or changes along those lines? Should it be that the community writes an RFC, it goes to the, you know, it goes to the LLC so that there's costs involved? You know, I, I'm not going to suggest that you try and answer that now, Bron, but one of the things to think about is what would be the interaction that you would expect with the high level authorization that has to be granted to the RSC, that has to be granted to the RPC, that has to be granted to the LLC. Where, what are those authorizations that, 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 are, that are there? And by the way, we probably don't get to grant anything to, much to the LLC uh, beyond what they already have. So um, just food for thought. Okay, yeah, it's um, an interesting question. I'm, I'm looking at the fact that in the cases where I haven't been, well, I've been involved in working group consensus, but not involved in the Auth48 stage, what gets published might not be what I reviewed and said, yeah, that looks good. Um, which is tricky because what happens if an RFC gets published and it turns out that, it, that what had consensus is not what actually wound up in the final document. So, um, yeah, yeah, so that that is, uh, just, you know, to restate the, where we are today, and then I'll, I'll go to Mark. Um, the, the, today, the area director has the responsibility, along with the working group chairs, to make sure that off do not change the general consensus of a working group. And it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a stream, as I see it. Mm. Um, uh, Mark. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, just as an aside, John John said that um, it wasn't worth going into too much detail about the working, working group, but then proceeded to give quite a bit of, of very colored detail. Uh, I, I don't agree with this characterization of the working group. I don't think it's uh, uh, relevant to what we're discussing here, but if folks are interested, I'd, I'd encourage them to go actually engage in that community and make their own judgments. 
Uh, Mark, sorry. Uh, Mark, I stepped over you there at the end. Do you have a further uh, comment? I just said, I just said a, frankly, a lot of what he said was quite inaccurate. OK. Um, all right. That point, I think it, it's got to be taken to the list for fact, for, if there's going to be a factual discussion. But if it is, my suggestion is that it be done in a, in a manner that is directly relevant to the, to, to the level that we're attempting to fill. That is to say, we don't have to go into every last detail about the World Working Group, but rather if there's a lesson to be learned there, to draw that out and to draw distinctions between the what working group, which are clearly factually supported, that are relevant to 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 the position in the, in the authority. Um, Ecker, I I, just, I sort of wanted to um, uh, I I got a line here partly because um, uh, uh, I, your reaction, Braun, um, uh, I think I found it a little confusing. Um, uh, I think certainly, you know, I, I also have had the the, the um, experience of like getting documents back and being like this appears to change the uh, the meaning of the document. And we, um, um, you know, I think that's that's like inevitably a consequence of copy editing. <laughs> um, you know, um, and you know, if, I don't know what other people have had the experience of writing a book, but you know, you you get back these copy edits, and then you're like, well, I want to take these ones and not these ones, and and like. Um, you know, um, and, and the general assumption is like, unless you're like, you know, grievously wrong that the, that the author is in charge of that, um, at least in a, in a book publication, um, you know, that, that generally you're free to take, take whatever copy that you please, unless, you know, presumably it's like really, really wrong. Um, but um, so I guess like if, if I had to fix something, so I don't think this is really about like, you know, uh, about equities. Um, I think it's more about tooling, frankly, which is that the, the current tooling we have makes it extremely difficult to like work with the copy edit with and distinguish what the copy edits are from the free formatting edits and from other things and, and from nominal technical edits. And I think if the tooling were better and the, and the processes were like even slightly better, it'd be like really a lot easier to figure out what changes were gratuitous and which ones weren't. Um, so I don't think it's actually a question of the various equities of the RPC and the authors, but really just a matter of like having a tool chain, which is like not terrible. Which like, just to be frank, ours is. <laughs> Okay. Um, I apologies, uh, Eric. You said the, the last sentence, the end of the last sentence, I couldn't quite understand. Can you repeat it? That having a tool chain, which is not terrible, which to be frank, ours is. Okay. So um, I, I, let me turn that around, right, and ask, um, is, the, the, the R, is the RSC responsible for uh, for setting for, for deciding what tool chain is used, or is the community responsible? Well, I guess you know. I think I think I think you shouldn't be surprised by my answer, which is that, that that we're the customer, and so while you know us dictating the exact the exact look of everything is not a great idea. Generally, our assessment of what is good and what is bad ought to be what to what dictates. So let me let me ask the question: Is the is the accountability there? What what is that? We sit there and we say we, we sit there and we have to approve or disapprove RSC decisions on a almost a case by case basis. That's obviously something that that doesn't scale, right? The other is that we allow the RSC to make a great many decisions, and if they get a bunch wrong, we go get a new RSC. Where is where where do you? Well, where do you set things on a spectrum? Well, I mean, I think you know again, like I mean, you know, this is a. In this particular question of tooling, this is like a pretty, you know, a pretty common kind of customer vendor relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and and, and there's, uh, you know, th th there's a fair amount of variation. So you know, um, you know, Mozilla, um, you know, uses GitHub, um, and like we have a remarkably little control over what GitHub does. And if we get really tired of GitHub, we just like go do something else. Um, on the other hand, you know, we have other things that we have. Um, you know, we use Fabricator, um, and we have somewhat more control of what Fabricator does um, because we are we're, we're bigger compared to you know compared to them as compared to GitHub. And so, you know, maybe we can get them to do things for us. Um, so I think there's sort of like you know it re really depends. I think in this case, you know, I would expect that since we're the only customer or one of the one of the, or one of one of four customers, I suppose, but we're really by far the largest. We'd have like quite a bit of control over what the what the system did, um, and that you know. We would have very many input on, on, on that process. Um, the usual procedure is to delegate some section of the system of the, of the people, you know, the community or the company to go deal with that. Um, you know, in this case, I presume it would be, you know, whatever, you know, something something delegated by the ISG or the LLC. So, uh, if, if unless I miss my mark, the uh, Ecker's comments 
just converged with what's going on in the WebEx chat, right? Um, and and if, uh, if people don't mind, that I think the key message that I'm seeing in the chat is, is that what we're talking about is trying to understand the delegations that, that occur versus where the, where the customer has to make decisions. This is, and, and um, so I think we're going to need to be uh, uh, somewhat more clear on. Would, would that be a fair statement, uh, Eric? Yeah, I think it certainly has to be clearer. Yes, <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, so we're not talking about, it's not really about, so framing it as, as independence is probably the, it, 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 it's, it's probably the wrong, wrong way to frame it, but framing it as a delegation of authority uh, and where we're, here's what we delegate and here's what we don't. I think this is uh, something that we'll spend well, some time. I, I guess I, I'm, I, I'm sort of, I, I guess I want to, want to resist this sort of delegation of authority. Um, you know, in a typical customer vendor relationship, you say we have these requirements and like you have this product, which like may or may not meet these requirements. And like at some point we're like, we're not going to buy that if it doesn't do it to the job. Now, when you have a long-term relationship with someone, they're a long-term vendor. There's like a bunch of back and forth about that. But um, I mean, it's not like, it's weird to sort of call it delegation of authority. It's saying it's a little different. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, we have actually drained the queue. Uh, before I move on, does anybody want to any, add, add any additional comments? The, what we've been talking about here is, is really the, the relationship that the RSC has to the community. Uh, I think this has been a pretty good discussion. Um, but uh, now I want to sort of change tact before, before I do. Uh, does anybody have any final points on this? All right, hearing none. Um, so, uh, what what we have been talking about, um, what, what we, we we've been we, we've been I've been trying to capture as many ideas as possible uh, that that have been crossing the list, and we've been um, we've been covering a fair amount of ground. Um, but I think from an organizational discussion, it's probably time to start formalizing uh, a sort of a problem solution set of documents. And the way we tend to do that in the ITF is, is through a draft. And what I'm thinking about at this point, and I haven't put this out on the list yet, but I will probably, you know, in the next day or two, is uh, that I think it's probably a good idea for us to capture, to use, to use at least a, an internet draft to capture problems that we're saw that that we we were solving, and that might evolve into the solutions document as well. Um, but I'm, I'm I'll, I'll probably uh, want to look for you know do a call for an editor, um, and I would look for an editor that has a pretty neutral and high level view. Um, but I'd like comments before I uh, I'm not going to do that without the group's agreement. Um, and uh, but I'd like comments about. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the idea, we'll, if people agree that's an approach. There we go. Do people understand or do, are there any concerns with that approach? I'm not hearing any, so um, I'll put that idea out on the list. Um, we'll, we'll move on to uh, um, future meetings. I think we need a little time to, to sort through the comments that are going on on the list to develop some of the problems, and I'm not quite ready to schedule yet another interim. Um, what, I, what I propose to do is that we get into the, the, the queue, as it were, for uh, a meeting at the IETF in um, uh, the, the virtual IETF, the, the virtual Madrid IETF, if you will. Um, and uh, so we'll get some time there. Um, if the group decides that they'd like to do another virtual between now and then, it should we, we can have that conversation online, but I'd want to make that decision pretty quickly so that we can get it scheduled. Um, and so uh, that's my proposal. Do, do people have comments or thoughts on that? Okay. 
Then. Well, Neville, sorry, are you trying to get in? Well, I was just going to say, how? Did, um, what, what's the date for AGF 108? I want to say it's the last week of July, so it's about uh, two months from now, or a little less than two months. Oh, okay. Well, so my guess would be another um, one of these um, WebEx sessions after about, well, at, about halfway towards the next AGF. Okay. Thanks. Jay just put the dates in. Um, Okay, if, uh, if people, if people oh, want to, I'm willing, very happy to schedule it. Um, we'll, I want to make sure we have a, a, a little bit firmer agenda. And I, it will probably be more of a formal group meeting at that point to, to try and make decisions uh, on, on some of the problems. I, I think we've had a good back and forth these last couple of meetings and now probably it's time to, you know, to, try, uh, to, to, to solidify a little bit as to uh, what the you know which problems we're going to solve, what uh, how we're going to view the RSC. Is it going to be as a customer relationship, very much the way Ecker described it? Is it going to be uh, something else? And um, I, I'll admit I haven't been able to follow every last bit of the chat that's going on. And I think people are going to want to review that. Um, but as we if we're going to have that meeting, I think I have to go on the list. I think we should. Be we now begin to zoom in on making some uh, decisions about the scope of the role and how we view it. I think that's probably the high level point that needs to be resolved next. Um, so with that, uh, we're to any other business. Any other business? Okay, um, thanks to those who stayed up very late um, and to those who got up very early uh, for, for joining and for everybody else for participating. Um, and I'll see you on the list. If you haven't signed the blue sheet, please do. Thanks very much and have a great day, afternoon, evening. It's a pleasant evening. Thanks, everyone. Bye.